recording. One, two, mic check. Yes, we're recording. Let's go. Intro. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. If you tune in, if you don't tune in, thank you anyway. I certainly appreciate both ways. Both ways I appreciate it. I thank you. If you didn't tune in today, earlier today, we did part one of Sin of a Woman. I'm going to try to get some things up on the board because I can't see. Forgive me. Um, we did Sin of a Woman part two. Now, part two, um, it's actually part two of a series that, that we did entitled Sin of a Woman. And I was trying to... Um, the last part of the broadcast earlier today, like maybe 25 minutes of it, got cut off. I was expecting that. I was expecting something to happen. I didn't know what it was. I'll, I want to thank the big homie off of Instagram who stayed on with me for the whole 46 minutes to make sure that the broadcast came through clearly and the insightful information that you that he uh, contributed to the, to the broadcast as well. I talked a little bit about uh, negativity and wh how we are, are not perceiving negative correctly. And um, he made a very good point that negative is for grounding. And that's why most of us are so high up in the clouds because we're not grounded. So we're looking for some means of becoming uh, high, whether it's illusional or not, that's what we're looking for. We're talking about the law of attraction via scent. And I was uh, coming to a point earlier today I want to say that I don't watch the board for um, I don't watch the board for comments and things. If I happen to look up and one is up there, then that's fine. But it's Friday night. Uh, happy Friday to everyone, and I assume everybody's either at a game or doing something. So, whatever it is, do your team, do your team, do your team. We're gonna go into um, "Sin of a Woman," very important part. If you missed the first part, please go back to it. I was talking about uh, talking to a young girl, uh, ninth grader, and her smell. I was talking about um, my situation with my ex-wife and how a, a gentleman who has passed on was telling me about, um, about Hosea and how Hosea was commanded to go find a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms and marry them in order to understand the process of... Um, what the world would become, how the world would begin to um, unfold on itself and people's uh, impulsive actions and reaction towards each other. The main topic today, however, was the sin of a woman. And in part one of sin of a woman, we talked about the chemicals that we introduce to our bodies and how those chemicals are conflicting with the natural chemical makeup of the female how we are spraying those chemicals on the vagina, spraying it on the breast, uh, getting, um, uh, what do they call them, uh, <clears throat> lumps in the breast, getting lumps under the arm, getting lumps in the ovaries, and other things. We're poisoning ourselves slowly but surely. And we talked about that. That is part one of Sin of a Woman. But today I wanted to, to close with something valuable that, our women once had that we are losing because of our ignorance. And I think sometimes it is a welcomed ignorance because you don't like nobody telling you nothing. Just certain people, just a certain person you want to tell you things and you wait for 20 years for that person to say it. The scripture talks about it. How we say to the soothsayers, say things to us we want to hear. Don't tell us anything about the hardships that we got to face in order to be with God. We just want to hear what we want to hear. So Let's go into the subject and we can close it down. I don't want to be on too long. Have you ever heard of something called copulin? Copulin, C-O-P-U-L-I-N, copulin. Copulin is a chemical makeup, a blessing, a gift from God that women possess. And that chemical makeup is strong enough to influence the thinking of a man. That chemical makeup is strong enough to uh, cause a man in the right situation to do close to what the woman desires for him to do or to think a thought 
close to what the woman desires for them to think. Now, I want to go into the chemistry of this copulin. I'm going to try to read these words correctly, but this is a chemical that is on the, um, what do you call it? The, the, uh, the, um, oh man, I thought of the thing for a long time and now I can't remember it. But we're going into ResearchGate, researchgate.net. The chemical makeup is OCH3, CH3, OCH3, HCH3. So we're talking about copulins, and we're going to go into how this can affect the male and how this can help the female to find the proper male. Now, copulins are chemicals secreted by a female's vagina. Chemi chemically, copulins are volatile. C2-C5, alphatic acid, Huggins and Pretty, Etta I, you look this up, 1976, study the chemical co composition of copulins in 12 patients for 44 ovulatory cycles by means of gas, chromatograph tandem with mass speculoscopy to identify organic volatile components. I said that, very good. These, these vaginal secretions contain a mixture of aphytic acid, alcohol, hydroketones, and aromic compounds. This is the chemical that is inside of the female's vagina. This is the chemical that a female can excrete in order to comfort the mind of a male. This is the gift from God that is being abused. This is a gift from God that is being ignored and the gift from God that is not even known by most. Now, research since the mid to late 90s, what did I say? I said research. We like to believe things. We like to act like we know things, but we very rarely research things. Research in the mid-90s has proven that copulence can affect and even control a male's brain. That is your gift, female. We're going to go into that, and this is for the young lady that I spoke with, and this is for the lady on my YouTube channel who was wondering why she always gets into uncompatible relationships with men. I'm going to stop right here for a second. I talked about scent of a woman in part one. And what I talked about in that broadcast by God's permission, the different smells, colognes, that you introduce to your body, females, that mix with the natural cologne that God gave you, when those two mix together and create another chemical compound. The male who smells your smell is attracted to you based on a lie. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's not smelling your natural self. He's smelling a mixture of you and a synthetic chemical manufactured in a laboratory. Those synthetic chemicals are designed to attract a certain kind of person. So you put on all of this Chanel and all of this other stuff, which smells really well, but it is conflicting with your natural self. And in conflicting with your natural excretion of female hormones, you are attracting the wrong male. So you find that you're incompatible, but you, you love him so, you, you want him to be a part of your life so much that you try to make a relationship work that will never work because your scent is not compatible with his, with his smell. So we're talking about the scientific now. What a woman has between her legs has the power to control a man's brain. If you understand how to do it and if you understand when to do it. Those two things I'm not going to tell you because I know for a fact that most of you will use it for the wrong reasons. Now, this increase in what happens to the male. The moment that a, f uh, a male enters a female's vagina, her body automatically begins to excrete this slimy liquid called copulin. It lubricates the wall of the vagina, but it does more than that. If the woman sits on top of the man, if he is laying on his side, however you do it, those chemicals actually go into the, uh, what do you call it? 
urethra, the opening of the man, into his testicles and is dispersed throughout his bloodstream. Now, let's say, female, that you want to see this man grow. Let's say, female, that you want to see this man achieve goals for you and him and your family. Let's say that before engaging in sexual intercourse, let's say you, by chance, say a prayer. Not a selfish prayer. You ask God for balance. You ask God that he allows your man to rise to the position that is rightfully his. And in the midst of the sexual act, he receives that from you. You want a man who is dedicated to you, but you have uh, lost your ability to attract a man because you have you've dulled your scent by washing in cologne. You wash with a, a cologne-based soap, put on a cologne-based deodorant, put on cologne, put um, scent in your hair, scent on your nails, washing your clothes in a scent, and the man cannot generate the ability to smell through all of that to get your proper scent. So you are attracting the wrong kind of man. But check this out. Once those chemicals get into the testicles and into the bloodstream of a male, this is scientific now, those chemicals increase the male's testosterone. And he's sniffing it now. He's smelling you. And may cause feelings of arousal in, in, in men if a woman is in their presence. It is said that once a man smells copulins on a woman, she is deemed to be more attractive. Did you know that back in the day, the way a, a man would uh, attract a woman is he would wipe under his arms with something and drop it. She'd take it up and smell it. Even today, um, when, when men pass by in, in videos and stuff, they drop a $100 bill. The woman takes it up. She smells it because the essence of the man is on the money. We are talking about uh, this is part. This is the first part of sin of a woman. We have two more parts after this. We're going to try to do them consecutively or successively. We're going to try to do that, but right now I want us to pay close attention. And this is for the nine-year-old, I mean, this is for the ninth grader, and this is for the lady on the YouTube channel that asks. When you go out, you want to look pretty, you have on everything, honestly, it's just, it's fake. Your face, your makeup, your hair, everything is fake. And you attract a man based on that fakery. And you wonder why all he wants from you is sex. Because the colognes that we, perfumes that we wear, all of this, you know, I can't even go into bed and bath or, or whatever it is in the mall. The, the scent is so strong, it confuses me. So when my wife, bed, bath, and beyond. So when my wife goes inside, I stay out. I can't even be close to the place. It really gives me a horrible headache. So to all of you who are listening, the copulins, a woman produces them. If she is aroused by you, immediately the fluid starts to flowing between her legs, starts to flowing out of her um, glands under her arm, the glands behind the neck. That's why they used to have a thing called necking. Man wants to get up behind you and smell your scent. But now he's smelling artificial smells. And those artificial smells are confusing his behavior towards you. All right, let's go. A little bit more. I want to make this very clear, for the, especially for the young. Black women in particular, you're losing the ability to produce copulins. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why. With the intake of the things that you eat and your mindset, at 30 years old, you have to use some form of lubricant to please a man. You got to 
put some type of lubricant between your legs. When at 50 or 60 or 70 years old, the body still can produce the copulence necessary that a man can enter you and get what he needs from you in order to build for the family. What does he get from you? The, the second self, the closest thing to God that we know is you, the woman. When you are in your right mind, you're the closest thing to God, if that makes sense. Because you have the ability to see God, meet God, introduce your man to the Godhead through what God put right between your legs. It produces children, a whole nother generation. It has the ability to do a lot of things, the, the, the uterus, the, the, the ovums, the vagina. But you are losing the ability to produce the chemicals between your legs to attract a man. So here you are with your sexy self. Big butt, big breasts, get you in the bedroom, you're dry. You're what is considered dead. You're a dead lay. You can't produce nothing. But your husband can go out and pick up a whore or pick up a lady of the night, and she can secrete the chemicals that he desires, the excitement, but what is in the chemical? What's in the chemical is worldly thoughts, worldly ideas. So I said earlier today in, in the book of Hosea, God commanded Hosea to go get him a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. Because the world was coming to that. And in order to be able to be the thing, you have to know how it operates. Many of us talk about the devil being a liar, but we don't really know the devil. And the reason we don't know the devil is because we don't know ourselves. You the devil. I'm the devil. And we are two steps away from satanic. But when you deny yourself the learning of your desires, you deny yourself before you learn who you are. Then you become, I don't know exactly how to put it. You're in the church, but you're still a devil. You're in the religious institution, but you're still a little, little devil. But in your mind, because you're present in that environment, you're good and everybody else is bad. So here you have this sexy woman. She's dressed well, but she can't produce nothing. A lot of you are going through this right now with your relationships with your man. You, you know he's out there messing around. You have no desire for sexual in relationships, you think it's tearing your body up. You think he just pounding on you. You don't even get the pleasure out of it. And he's pounding on you, trying to get a reaction from you, trying to get you to react to what he's doing, and you ain't reacting. He finishes up with you. I, I got to go out and get a pack of cigarettes. But he's out there strolling the strip, looking for a woman who can give him what his heart desires which is that copulent. Now, I don't know if you look at Real Housewives or Love and Hip Hop or all of this other stuff, but Latino and Spanish women are taking black men by storm. And black men are telling these Latino, Spanish women, Puerto Rican women, literally that they are better than you are, black woman. And this Spanish woman believes it. She is allowed to act a real donkey and gets away with it. What is it about her? Spanish and Latino women, look it up for yourself. They produce so much copulin during sexual intercourse. It's like a flood, like a waterfall. It's like there's enough for everybody. In that, it gives a man comfort. Then he come home to you, and you wait a check. Wait the money, and you lay there for five minutes and let him grunt on top of you, but you are not sexual. They are very sexual. Same thing with Caucasian women. So black men are going to Caucasian women because of the love that they feel and because of the inhibitions that they encounter when they're in the bedroom. This woman produces 
so much copulence, so much liquid love between her legs that it has us there. You're losing, black woman, and you don't care because you're taught all about the money, all about the bands. I just got to, as long as I'm making that money. But your inability to reproduce, even a man that you love, when you don't, when you don't feel in your heart and in your mind that he is up to par, the chemicals that are produced between your legs when you're with him lets him to know how you feel about him, if he is in tune. We're talking today. So young people are not wearing as much cologne, not wearing as much perfume. So the natural scent of young girls, these young boys are smelling it and they are like animals in the wild. So now you in the bathroom at school, bending over, and he pounding on you, releasing inside of you. You're pregnant today. You're pregnant tomorrow. You're pregnant the next day. By the time you finish high school, you got five children. No daddy because all of them are gone because they got a mixed signal, and they don't even like you. They just wanted to have sex with you. Control yourself. I told you that... Uh, I began to masturbate in the, I said the 12th grade, it was the 11th grade, I think. But the smell of the sperm in an early age, it's got a smell to it that makes you want more of it. So I went on a masturbating crusade. Big mistake, but I had no one to tell me what I was doing. I was looking at dirty magazines and all of these other things and getting aroused by seeing black men and white women, Spanish, old, whatever. It just excited me. And masturbating and releasing sperm and smelling the sperm excited me even more. But there was no one there to explain to me how this thing works. Two thousand and nineteen, our children are so engaged in the sex act that by the time they are 18, 19 years old, 20 years old, they won't be able to produce the young girls, the copulent necessary to attract the man that they are supposed to marry. So from high school all the way until they're dead, all they're doing is having sex with different men. The incident that occurred in Sumter, unfortunately, many, many more, you're bringing all these men into your homes just to have sex with you because you're trying to feel something, you're empty inside. Protect your copulin. Protect what's between your legs. To the, I call her a young lady, but she was in her 50s. On my YouTube channel that is still having issues with men in relationships, I want to say this. Abraham in the Bible, Abraham's wife Sarah, laughed at God when he came to her and told her that at 70, 80 years old, she was going to have a baby. She had no idea that she could still produce the chemicals necessary to mix with the sperm of her husband in order to produce a child. She thought she was barren. At 60, 70 years old, black women, you are still able to produce the copulin, the chemical between your legs to attract a man. You are still able to produce the liquid gold between your legs that can attract a man. A man today, the young girls call it squirting. You know, they release all of this, this fluid from out of their vagina, or they release a lot of white fluid out of their vagina. They don't understand what it is, and the man is right down in there, head first. I know I used to do it. Still do it. Because the smell, it does something to the male. And if the thoughts are correct when you're releasing the chemicals, then the end result will be the proper thing. So a woman can straddle a man, his penis inside of her. You don't have to move for at least a minute or two just there. And the opening of the penis, the urethra opens, and the chemical goes down in. It goes into the testicles, and whatever you want to produce, you can produce it. It's a long-term effect. But this is something that we were not taught. Ladies and gentlemen, we were not taught the science of relationships. We were not taught the science of warfare, and we were not taught the science of, of money. We were not taught these things. 
We were not taught the science of religion. These things were kept from us. So anything that we got, we stumbled upon it. Now, females are releasing a musk smell that attracts other females. Males are releasing a musk smell that attracts other males. All of this is by design. The power of your thoughts during the sexual act. If you become pregnant during the sexual act, depending upon your thoughts, you're creating a God right in your womb. I made the statement that we are using the term king and queen lightly because you're not producing kings and queens. We're producing bitches and whores. Because when we are having sex, we just, we fucking. And I said this would be a little graphic. Excuse the language, but I got to say it. I got to say it like this. This is why in the Bible, God told Hosea, go marry a whore. Go marry a whore, a woman of whoredoms. Your children will, will be children of the world. They're going to be the bangers. They're going to be the sellers. They're going to be all of these things so you can understand how to deal with this generation of people. So to the lady on YouTube, I won't say your name. We have to go back to our natural smell. Now, the Chinese and the Japan, the Chinese in particular, they practice this type of sexual, um, they practice this type of sex with their mates. At 80 years old, you can look it up on the internet. Look up 80-year-old Chinese woman having sex. They're having sex. And they're not having sex with uh with the aid of some lubricant, they're producing it. So you got this grandma who this young boy is 30 years old and he needs the love of a grandma, the knowledge, the wisdom of a grandma and she's cuddling him, he's on her breast, he's between her legs. I'm not talking about family, I'm talking about actual sex. And when he gets up, he is able to get up and face the world another day because of the comfort he received from a woman. You are a comforter. That is your job. That is the biggest job that God ever gave anyone, woman. You got that. You are a comforter. We're almost done. Now, I'm going to read this. Spiritual leadership. Spiritual leadership worldwide abstains from sexual activity as a way to connect more strongly with their higher selves. As one of the most potent energy forces known to man, sexual energy created and, de created and destroyed civilizations. People go to war over women and over the sexual energy. Energy is a constant flux, transmuted from one form to the next, and the study of these processes is a global phenomenon. A healing practice is called Reiki in, in Japanese. It's a healing practice, and its origin is in Japan. It's used by healers to move energy from both within and from without of the body to produce healing. All of this can occur. There's a black doctor, female doctor on YouTube. I can't remember her name, but she practices this. She practices how to use sexual energy to heal. The same practice is known in Christianity as laying on of hands. Scientific scholars incessantly study the way energy is neither created nor destroyed. I'm going to say that again. Energy is neither created nor is it destroyed. Simply transferred between forms. So you can transfer energy. There are people who can say God's words and touch you and you can feel it. This basic understanding that we as humans are energetic life forms is the premise behind transmuting sexual energy. And underlying commonalities about the transmuting of sexual energy is, the, is there is no requirement to believe in any specific religion as the practice of self-realization does not depend on religious dogma. You don't have to be a part of no specific religion to practice this. But I am encouraging young females to guard yourself, guard your vagina, guard 
your God-given ability to produce not only a person, another human being, but to help those who are among us. That's what a mother is for. When a mother has pure love for her child and she hugs her child and say, you can do it, the energy of that thought, that suggestion, goes into the mind of that child. But slavery separated that from us. So the Bible says that a day will come when mother will be against daughter, father against son, and enemy enemies will be of those of your own household. So now we don't have the people in our corner to encourage us to do better, be better, give us the opportunities that are necessary for us to grow. So now you hear people saying family is the worst, family is bad, family is not a good thing. And when the family unit is destroyed, then the person is literally internally and spiritually destroyed. But you, woman, have the ability to produce the copulins, the liquid gold between your legs, that can help your family. The, the scent between, under your arms and the glands that you release, the love, the, the, um, the belief, you have that ability. That's why the women in the church wear the big hats. They wear the crowns because they're the queens. And they understand how to hold a man up, but you're losing that ability. And the young aren't even being taught that ability, so they're using sex for pleasure and sex to get things. I had a thought in my mind I wanted to interject that. I saw a video. Yeah, we're good. I saw a video on YouTube probably about 15 years ago where these Mormons did experiments with monkeys and they put colognes, lipstick, and all of these different smells on monkeys, apes, on the females. They put all of these different uh, smells on the female monkeys. And the male monkeys wouldn't go anywhere near the females who didn't have their natural scent. Then they did an experiment where they were giving the female monkeys birth control pills. And the male monkeys would not go to go to have sex with the female monkeys because they weren't excreting their natural hormones. Why are we in relationships that are so, you know what? When you go out, if you want to smell a certain way, I put on a little color. But when you're home, female, leave your natural scent. Man wants to smell your natural scent. Don't put on so much deodorants because you're blocking your glands and you're, you're causing cancerous tumors in the, the glands under the armpit, cancerous tumors in the ovaries. Let your body breathe. And in letting your, allowing your body to breathe that natural scent, you are attracting the man that you say you want to be with the rest of your life. I hope that makes sense. Don't go to bed full of colognes and perfumes. Bed, all the whole bed smells like chemicals. Go to bed your natural sweet smelling self. Wash your behind now, but go to bed your natural sweet selling, smelling self so that your Connection with him can produce the copulence necessary to make things happen in a relationship. So to the young, the boys are going to be after you because they can smell you. They don't love you. It's an infatuation. And once they get what they are after, that's all they're after. To the old females, Religion and church, all of that is where fine if it's helping you to grow. But I promise you, nine times out of ten, your husband is out in the street looking for a woman who's going to give him what you can't give him because you don't even want to give it to him. You don't want to be that, uh, that uh, free spirit with your husband. And this causes rifts in relationships. And that bitterness that you feel towards him, it's excreting through your chemical, through your, um, through your glands. 
And even though you give him sex, he knows that it's not something you want to do. It's in your body movement. It's in the way you behave during the sexual act. So he finishes with you and goes out in the street looking for somebody else who would just give him that satisfaction of, I pleased that woman. She produced enough copulin that proved to me that look at how wet she was. That's just what it is. So I think I touched on everything. I told you about my relationship with my ex-wife. Yes, let me, let me finish that. If you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it again. I tried to do the live broadcast earlier today. It gave me about 30 minutes in, and then it started acting up. Nothing I could do about it. Good evening. How are you, Miss Twine, Mr. and Mrs.? And that and that, that messed, it, I didn't get the other 30 minutes in. Now that, this couple, Kevin and Monica, I don't know them personally, but I like what they do online business-wise. And whether they know it or not, they have a chemical connection between the two of them, a spiritual connection between the two of them, an energetic connection between the two of them that one person's idea, one person's vision for tomorrow is in agreement with the other. So they not only project that as they come on as a couple, but the children do it as well. That type of connection occurs during the sexual act. It's a private thing. It's their business. But if it is not up to par, then it ain't gonna it ain't gonna fare out too well. You go into sex trying to produce love and leave out of it angry because of a lack of communication between the two parties in the sexual act. I'm trying to talk about this thing without being vulgar, but our children are in trouble. And then the older people are in trouble, and they're angry. They're angry. The older women, because their man always coming home smelling like what? Another woman. And they sitting up in there looking bummy, looking crappy, but angry, but not trying to attract the man in the right way. I told you before, young people, if you really want to know if you love someone, if you really want to love that one person, stay away from pornography, stay away from masturbation, stay away from being with other men and other women, and when that sexual desire arises in the both of you, and that chemical arises from your glands and start to excrete from your glands, and you get together, Fire. Straight fire. That's what it's going to be. That's, that's why they used to sing back in the day, fire and desire. Uh, send chills up my spine. All of these different, that's what it's talking about. An electrical jolt from the relationship, from copulating, from copulating, and that's what they used to call it. Copulating. Producing the copulins, the woman producing the copulins out of her vagina that keeps the male and female together. For those of you who didn't get it, that look up the word C-O-P-U-L-I-N. That is the chemical makeup of a woman between her legs that she is able to help a man grow or she can destroy him with that chemical. Because while the man think he's ejecting sperm into the woman, he's not aware that she's ejecting ovums or copulin into his urethra, into his testicles, that disperse throughout his body and creates a chemical reaction. It's true. Now let me finish this. When my wife and I broke up, my ex-wife and I separated because of infidelities on her part. And I told you in part one how I was just down, lonely, horrible. I didn't understand how this woman had so much control over me. This is how I ended the last one earlier today. Because I was always one who loved to perform. I think it's called fellatio, but I love to taste a woman. That's, that's just, that's me. My wife, whoever I'm with, not just any random woman. And I was doing that. But she was out sleeping with other men, coming home, maybe with sperm inside of her from somebody else. If not sperm, definitely the rubber from a prophylactic or whatever it was, but I was ingesting that. So when she left me, it was like I was a slave to her. 
And I told her, you, I, it almost like I'm putting on the panties and you the man. Because of the control that you have over me, and I couldn't even understand it. So young children today are killing themselves. They're becoming drug addicts and, and alcoholics trying to numb themselves, numb the pain of not knowing why they love this person so much. You keep his penis in your mouth. He keeps his vagina in his mouth. And y'all are producing these chemicals out of lust. Even if you're angry today, you get so excited you have sex in anger. Yes, yes, we do. Yes. Today, young girls love being choked and all that stuff. Your bedroom antics is your business. But depending upon the thought in your mind is what is released into your copulin, into the liquid that flows from out of your vagina. <laughs> so my brother was living in one of my homes, and he had moved from Atlanta. My wife was gone. My children were gone. And I said to him, I got to find out why this woman treated me this way. And he said to me, you will never find out. And I told him, God willing, my brother's passed on now, so I didn't get to tell him I did find out. But I told him, God willing, I am going to find out why she did that to me. I am going to find out why I put 100% in this relationship and she gave her vagina to all of these different men, men that I knew, men that I call friends. Why did she do that? He said, you'll never find out. It's 2019. Listen to this, then I'm going to close. This is for the older lady who asked me the question. This is for the younger lady who I could smell her hormones, and I cautioned her that she's going to end up bend over in a bathroom somewhere trying to get love from a guy who don't love her. I was, I told you about Raki, a Raike. That is the Japanese practice of men understanding how to make a woman produce copulins or get her wet between her legs and use that energy for the benefit of the family. We're talking about sin of a woman. We're closing. After I started masturbating like a madman in the 11th grade, I masturbated so much that I didn't even want to do it anymore. I masturbated so much that looking at a woman's behind and all of that stuff didn't, it didn't affect me anymore. And I studied what type of mindset I had, as I said earlier, I'm what they call a sapiosexual. I am attracted to the intelligence of a woman, not her shape, not her face. When I have a conversation with you and, and your mindset is like mine, I'm with you. But this world is trying to teach our children this systematic thing of just going after the body and that's it. So many of us are like Hosea of the Bible who was commanded to take on a woman of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. Don't be ashamed of your life. There's nobody that can say that because you did this thing, you're horrible and they're not. My ex-wife is not a horrible person. We, we were young. It tore me apart, but I'm not on this broadcast to bash her or any woman or any man because lessons had to be learned. But now those lessons that were learned has to be taught to our young people and has to be taught to the church family because women, your men are out there screwing other women. Not that they desire to, but you're not giving them nothing. You 30 years old and you got to use a lubricant to to lubricate your vagina, that is supposed to be a natural thing. At 80 and 90 years old, Sarah in the Bible having sex and having babies. A nat she had no lubricant. The God-given gift of copulation, of copulence, the liquid gold of the woman's vagina, you can't produce it no more. Now let me close. I was watching... A film. I, I was. I'm saying this because it was a um, a, a, a X-rated movie, and I was watching it probably last week, but not for the reasons that you think. 
after I masturbated and masturbated and masturbated in my youth, I said to my, there has to be something more to sex than this. And I started studying sex. The parts of the woman body, what her body produces, likewise with the man. I understood sexual transmutation, how to hold on to the energy. I practiced it for several years. I never orgasmed for seven years. I had, I mean, for two years straight. I, I had sex, but I didn't, I didn't orgasm. I transmuted that energy into my brain. Because as I said before, we're not talking about beliefs today. We're talking about scientific fact. And I did it by God's permission because I wanted to know the results of it. And I can tell you, most of your uh, motivational speakers from Zig Ziglar to the rest of them, in their books, they talk about sexual transmutation, how to take the sperm, not release it, but hold it and make it energize your mind and your body. I encourage you to do that. That's what Jesus did. That's what makes a person empathetic. Lord, have mercy. Let me see. Lord, please don't let me talk too much and say too many things. I think I'm good, though. So don't be ashamed of your past. I was looking at the movie. We're closing. The man was trying to be sexually intimate with his wife, and she was very blah, very dull. He wanted sex. She bent over, and then he entered her, and he looked at her, and he saw that she wasn't into it. Same thing happened to my, with my ex-wife years ago. I wanted sex from her, and I remember her bending over and saying, here, and you better hurry up, too. That's what she told me. You better hurry up. Just go ahead and, and finish. And that, that broke something in me. It tore something in me apart, and I didn't know how to fix that. Likewise, in this movie, and I'm just watching this movie probably last week, the man saw that the woman was not interested in him sexually. If you're not producing that liquid gold between your legs when you were the man, you're not doing him no favors. So he set up a situation where he hired a man to go have sex with his wife just to see if she would be excited. And in the movie, she was resistant at first, but then she started to producing the copulin she started squirting. That's what the young folks are going through right now because young people are stumbling upon the G-spot in the vagina. They're stumbling upon the good feeling of sex. They're stumbling upon how it feels to be loved and, and wanted no matter where you are. So they're hyping up their skirts and everything and just screwing on the bus. They're screwing in the bathroom. They're screwing in the band room. They're screwing anywhere they can. So he did that for his wife. And comes to find out, she was bored with him. My wife was, ex-wife was bored with me because my mindset was on family. My brother has passed away. But I asked my ex-wife one day, she called about my son. And I said, tell me something. <coughs> Why after all I did try to do for us, <coughs> Why, why would you go out and do what you did to me? And she told me. It was the excitement of other men wanting me. And you had become more like my father than my husband or my lover or my boyfriend. And I was no longer, the only way I could be sexual with you was to be thinking about the sex I had with someone else. You see the dilemma there? how the disease will be spread through that because we're not being honest. But she was honest. And I said, I understand that. And the reason I understood it is because I had just watched that movie the night to a week prior to asking her that question. I understood it completely. So we have to begin to protect our young people by talking like this. Like I tell you, if my son said, what's my dick for or what is a pussy for, I'm going to tell him. Because everything is on the Internet already. They see it. They know it. But they are confused with it. They don't understand how to use it. Now, this is not everything about copulin. 
this is not everything about the power of a female. But I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again, and I feel this deep down in my soul right now for females. Some of you have been molested. Some of you have been raped. Some of you have been molested and raped by fathers, mothers, uncles, nephews. Nobody could get you through that but God. But how, what, however you see him. But now you have an obligation to use your experience to save our young people. You're not obligated to make them feel happy about everything. You're obligated to help them through the rough times. That's what messengers and prophets are for. They're not to keep you happy. If you, have, if you didn't listen to part one, go back. And listen to what I said about Jesus and the good shepherd. How when you hired to be a shepherd, you hired to be a minister, your concern is not for the people like a person who's dedicated their soul, their life to it. Let's begin to help young people. And the older lady that I talked to, she's 70-something years old, but she hasn't been intimate with her husband for over five years. And I spoke with him, and he don't want to do it. She's a beautiful woman, very nice, very voluptuous, but she has a masculine thing about her, her mouth. She runs it too much. And when you are with a woman, you want that softness. You want that surrendering nature of a female that she gives her body to you, her mind, her spirit to you, and as a male, you use it properly. That's why young girls are going to young girls, because young girls understand. That's why young boys are doing the same. And we want to run down on them for being homosexual and lesbian, but don't run down on them. You don't know what society has done to them. They can't tell you nothing. They can't tell you they've been gang raped by the dudes they thought were their brothers in the struggle. They can't tell you that. They can't tell you uncle been put, putting his finger all up in their vagina. They can't tell you that. You don't know what they're going through. I thank you all for tuning in. I talked about, let's see, I finished with the the energy, what the Japanese. I told you about my, my ex-wife, the young girl, that what I told her. And I want to close with this. I told you about how motivational speakers use the power of sex. I just want to read this, and I'm going to close. It says, and this is out of, this is Carrie Gooseby. This was written Saturday, February 16, 2019, and this is on the armywall.com. It's a library that talks about sexual energy. And I'm going to read this paragraph, and I'm going to close. It says, according to tantric texts. Now, tantrism or tantric is, is teaching you how to use sex. You know what? what's close to that? The dance, the dancing that we are doing now, the Afrobeat dances, the African dances, the wind, and all of that stuff. All of that stuff is about tantric. That's about appealing to a man. So I, I always tell people, I understand ballet dancing. I understand stripper pole dancing. I know It's about appealing to a man. But we made it all filthy. According to tantric texts, sex is for pleasure, procreation, or liberation. Here, liberation refers to the ability to transmute sexual energy into creativity. That was always my nature. When I'm creating, I'm of God. I feel the God spirit. It tore me apart when everybody started doing the same things. Everybody taking pictures, everybody doing video. Because you don't see the creativity in that creative person anymore. All you see is, oh, he's cheaper, so I go with him. And you miss it. And we miss the greatness of our children, their creativity, because we're so busy trying to live. But that creativity comes from that energy, that sexual energy. So the ability to transmute sexual energy into creativity, productive and enth enthusiasm as we engage in an orgasmic life experience. I told you that I transmuted energy by God's permission for two years. My orgasms were in my brain. I kid you not. I didn't have to release sperm. That's for weak people. 
You know, when a boxer is training for a fight, he can't be around a woman because he can't release his sperm because that sperm is what's going to make him aggressive. You know, women, how when you uh, when you want to be intimate with your husband, you mad. Get the hell from around me, God damn it. <laughs> Until he soothes that savage beast in you. He mellows you out by being intimate with you. That is the transmutation of sexual energy. This is real. And there is, you can search high and low, and there is nobody in this area of South Carolina that, is, that will talk about this type of thing. So sexual energy is believed to be potentially potential waiting for release, which often takes the form of explosive energy felt throughout the body. Depending on the motivation of the individual, this energy has two forms of release out through the sexual organ or up to the higher energy center. You want it to go up to the higher energy center. Don't, don't, don't orgasm every time you have sex. Don't, don't release. Now, women, you do. You, you, you orgasm because you're releasing the copulent. But men, just stop busting so many nuts. That's how we say it. Stop that. Control yourself. You ever seen a, a pretty girl walk by and these hardcore dudes grab their leg? Woo! I feel so embarrassed for you. You have no control, no self-control. And God wants us to have self-control. Depending upon the motivation of the individual, the energy has two forms of release out through the organs or up through to the higher energy centers. The higher energy center is where God is. Do you know that angel halo? that is always depicted on the head of a person is that higher energy, that glow, that flows from your sexual region up to your brain? Do you know that all of the hurt, pain that you feel can be dissolved through abstaining from the orgasm and the female for giving yourself to the man that you love? You can dissolve a lot of the pain that you're going through in your life. You can. You can even be going through physical pain and have sexual encounter with the right person and that will th that pain will go away it's like it's endorphins it creates endorphins in the brain we are almost done i wanted to say this because we have all of these motivational speakers now and like i said in part 1 most of us are motivational speakers more than we are preachers but there is a place for motivational speakers and a place for ministers and a place for laying on hands because if a man is transmuting his sexual energy and he takes his hand and he touches you with his hand, you don't know how to handle that type of energy from a man. If he's a filthy person, he's going to take advantage of you because you're going to want to give him, you're going to want to give yourself to him. But if he is a man of God, he's going to show you how to work that in your favor. Remember that. Filthy, he'll take it. Man of God, he's going to show you how to work it in your favor, okay? All right, let's close. There are two forms of release, the higher energy centers. As such, the transmutation of the energy is considered a sacred way of manifesting goals and desires in this life. When you transmute that energy, and let me tell you what the Japanese do. When a woman secretes that liquid from out of her vagina, they take that liquid and they put it on medallions. And they wear it around their neck for, for, for that energy to protect them from negative spirits. That's your power, woman. You got that. You're a beast in a good way. Now, you, according to Napoleon Hill, if you've never heard of Napoleon Hill, look him up on YouTube or read one of his books, I Have Think and Grow Rich. He's a motivational speaker, a millionaire. He makes money off of it. But listen to what he says, then we're going to close. According to Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, says this, sexual desire is the creative ability unknown to them at other times. With this in mind, we delve a little deeper into understanding of how we can direct sexual energy into a healthy way. As part of the Hindu and Buddhist traditions, tantric sex is used to achieve self-realization. Through every avenue of this life experience, including our physical, sp including our physical, spiritual, and emotional states, by engaging in a tantric pose, which may or may not include physical intercourse, 
sexual energy is channeled and redirected up through the energy center, which is the spinal cord. In the Bible, they call it the staff. Moses leaned on his staff. He leaned on his energy, the flow of energy from its anal cavity up to the top of his crown, which is his brain. And if you use that energy in a negative way, it doesn't become a halo. It becomes two horns. So when you use energy negatively, you become a devil. Now you, you're giving your sex a way to control people. And that's why the devil is always depicted as having a long tail. Because the tail is a is representation of the ejaculation of the sperm. And using the sex act from the left-hand path, from the negative path. If you see the pictures depicting Christ, you see him with the poles, with the fingers up. That's all talking about sex. We'll talk about that another time. I know it's heavy. We're closing. Now, by engaging in tantric poses, we may or may not be including physical intercourse. You don't even, you can stand in, I used to, I used to teach my, my wife now how we could sit in front of each other and just feel each other's energy and didn't even have to engage in sex. She never really picked up on it, but I think she got it now, though. <laughs> but it, earlier in our relationship, because I was studying that, that's what it means to motivate a person. Person, You can do it. They're picking up off of your energy. Now, sexual energy is channeled and redirected up through the energy centers of the body and transmuted into increased awareness of our existence on this plane of life. For young people, don't give up your virginity too quick. Hold on to it if you can. And for those who have given up your virginity, you can take it back. You can be born again. Abstain from the orgasm for six months to a year. You can still feel the love and the energy of a male, but don't give yourself to him until you've cleansed yourself. And when you have sex again, it's going to feel brand spanking new. I promise you. I promise you. This has been studied, and it is proven so. So thank you all for tuning in. Woo. 56 minutes, right on point. Thank you all for tuning in to this installment of the 19 Report. I am Jamil Salib Zamir. Please stay tuned. I told y'all Dale Castro Powell's got something to tell you on Sunday. Man, it's going to be real. Thank y'all for tuning in. <laughs>